This is basically um, a loss of grounding. This is a, a loss of your footing, feeling as if you're at the mercy of everything else around you. You're at the mercy of other people and not feeling in control of your life. So I do feel a lot of good things are coming in for you. And you're just like being hit left and right by very amazing, splendid things. But as a result of it, you feel like, you know, where's all this coming from? You know, what did I do to deserve all of this? And even, you know, um, what's my next step? How do I know what I'm doing is right? Well, when you're on the right track, when good things are coming to you in abundance, it usually is a good indication that you're on the right track. So um, <clears throat> just accept it and leave it at that, okay? Um, the other thing that I am picking up very strongly is uh, grounding, anchoring yourself is going to be very, very important for you because I feel like your soul wants to explore. And um, for a lot of you, if you're kind of like stuck in one job and you feel there is stability in it and you might want to just stay there and, you know, and, and create like um, work and climb the career ladder, the corporate ladder at that same job, I feel that very strongly there's another job coming in for you and it seems to be that's where you're guided to to go so if you're feeling like you're in a rut rest assured that it's time for you to move on to something else okay for a lot of you because i we have the ace of pentacles here which is a tremendously beautiful card and it indicates a gift of financial abundance coming in from god and um this is an opportunity. So this is an opportunity not only for a new career path, for a new employment situation, for a new revenue stream. It's also a new way of living. So think of this as a major drastic change in your life, but it's opening up a new avenue for you to um, walk through. Okay, so there's a new path as well associated with this. So being, you know, the earth sign and very prone to risk aversion, I feel that a lot of you would rather stay where you are and not make this move, or at least you don't really know if you can trust it. But I do feel a lot of abundance is just coming through for you. So take that leap of faith and, you know, just know that it's in alignment with your life path. You're being spiritually, divinely guided in order to pursue things in this direction. I feel that it is right up your alley. It is something that has a lot of potential if you decide to build on it. But I feel like instead of, you know, grabbing the opportunities, I feel that a lot of you are not only slow on the uptake, but you're kind of sitting here ruminating. So a lot of you might be, you know, in search of work, <clears throat> or you might have applied for many, many jobs, or you might have applied for even schools, or, you know, just any situation where you've applied for multiples of something. And then one of the, the options fall, comes through. And you're sitting here either waiting for other options that you want a little bit more. You're, you're waiting for everything to fall into place. And the advice here is that you actually should take that first offer because if you're like pressed for time, I feel that that first offer is going to be the most beneficial. So that's something to think about. Um, if you're applying for school or if you're applying for work or anything like that, I do feel that first offer that comes through usually is something that is meant to be because it's got, it seems to me like it's got your name like written all over it. So that's just something, you know, to keep in mind when you go through the whole selection stage. It's sort of like the employers, they read, um, you know, your resume or they read your personal statement or whatever, and they feel like, wow, this person is a good fit. So they send out that, you know, um, offer letter right away. Whereas the other schools, they go through their applicants and it seems as if they drag out the process. So it just leads me to believe that maybe because they're dragging out, out the process, that they didn't have you in mind initially, or it wasn't like, you know, I know like a perfect fit. So they're trying to make the pieces fall together. So the first choice seems like it's more the perfect fit. It means that they really want you. And when they really want you, your bargaining power is going to increase. So you can, you know, barter with them when it comes to your starting salary. So it feels like it's a good deal all around. Um, but either way, this is a really beautiful, beautiful um, month. I don't feel any challenges associated with this, except, you know, you might be a little bit um, slow on the uptake. That's the only thing I'm sensing because everything else is just tremendously great. 
Um, I do feel, you know, a lot of uh, financial stability coming through, new jobs coming through. Um, for a lot of you, it's just like you have so many options to choose from. And the only thing is, I feel like you might be um, scared about, you know, making, choosing the wrong choice. But I feel that whatever resonates with you, whatever, if you're debating between different things, write out a list of pros and cons. And I feel silly saying this to an earth sign because I feel like you already do that. But I do feel that um, if you consult other people, um, they might steer you down the wrong path. Okay, so that's the only danger I'm sensing here. This is a, a month about introspection, about self-reflection, and, and pretty much self-reliance. You kind of know what you want. You kind of know, like, what's your top choice. You kind of know what your options are. So it would be in your best interest to, like, withdraw inwards and figure out what you think is the best fit for you on a personal level versus what people are telling you, you know, that they think looks prestigious or looks, you know, like a high powered job, but um, it doesn't resonate. If it doesn't resonate with you on a personal level, you don't have to go with it. Just choose something that you know is a good fit for you, and only you know what is a good fit for you based on how much you know your, yourself. But overall, I, I do feel that it would be best for you to leave other people out of the equation when you pick what is right for you. You can ask them for a second opinion for sure. But that initial first choice, I feel like it's the, the right one, okay? At the same time, I mean, everything just looks very, very amazing. There might be um, travels as well. So there might be opportunities for um, the Wheel of Fortune is usually just, you know, your, your luck turning. And um, when I, I see this card, I feel as if there might be, for a lot of you, there might be opportunities for higher education, for travel, for expansion, for publishing. If you are, you know, looking for any of those opportunities, you have a lot of proposals coming through, a lot of options to choose from. And I do feel that um, by the end of this month in February, your life is going to drastically, drastically be changed, all for the better. But I do feel that this is a very, very important month in which choices, decisions, and life plans, like game plans, have to be solidified. So this is an important hitter type of month where you know the wheel of fortune is turning in your favor you have options and you need to be really fast on the uptake because i feel like um I, I feel like the element of time might not be working for you so you want to grab these opportunities as soon as they come in rather than you know letting other people come and take your spot okay so for example if you're applying for school and they might tell you Heed the deadline. So just, you know, keep deadlines in mind because I feel like the element of time. But either way, the Four of Cups are basically, it's a lot of options that you have at your disposal here. But I feel like, you know, go with that gut reaction, the, the, the initial first choice, that gut instinct. You really should trust it. So I feel like, you know, this whole um, thing about that, having that existential crisis where you're just like, how do I know this is the right one? And you know, that whole sliding door moment will come in where you feel like if I take this option, there is opportunity cost about, you know, that the other options disappearing for me. So how would my life be drastically different if I'd gone with that instead rather than this? So in the process, you're kind of like cycling through over and over and over again your different choices and as a result you might be kind of like inundated by indecisiveness and you're not acting but the the, the point here is you really have to get going and I, I felt like I was getting the the same type of energies for Gemini like last mid-month last month and you know it, it's just important to get going here okay um by the end of the month, we do have the death card. And I feel like it is greatly about opportunity costs, where if you choose one option, you're foregoing all the others. And that's what scares you. And, you know, it is, um, it's a tough decision. But the point here is that you have a lot of abundance. So don't be afraid of making the wrong decision. Just think positively and, I guess, have faith that you're making the right one. Okay, so... um. For a lot of you, there might be like research opportunities because I do feel with the Hermit and also the Page of Swords, this is about communication. This is greatly, greatly about, you know, some type of training program where you're a page and you're 
um, you're relying on this opportunity, this training opportunity, this additional schooling in order to graduate into the night. So I feel that there is greatly travel associated with, with it, expansion in your intelligence, in your mental capacity, in your philosophical outlook. So this proves to, to be one of those life changer types of month. All your wishes are basically coming true. I mean, we don't have the wish card, but with Ace of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune coming in, in the upright position underneath very, very positive cards here, I do sense that no matter what you are, being protected here okay so there's no fear there shouldn't be fear about opportunity costs about you know f um making the wrong choice so the fear is indeed in your head so just you know try your to to get yourself out of it um come out of the place of inaction okay for those of you who are you know um s dating and things like that i do feel I do feel that for those of you who are dating like an, another earth sign, I do sense that there is an element here of um, potentially some type of travel associated with either you or the other person where there might be work opportunities, but there's travel associated with it. So you're not sure the, the progression of the relationship moving forward. And the earth signs are, um, excuse me, uh, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, okay? So there might be that lingering attachment here and there might be new work situations or even travel opportunities and you're not really sure how the relationship will progress in the future if you choose to continue the relationship or not. Um, I also feel as well that for a lot of you, um, this is greatly a month about, you know, not crying over spilled milk, okay? I, I feel, I, I know that, you know, in life, there are always things that uh, tugs at our heartstrings, and there are things that we are emotionally invested in more than others. It's just the way life works, and this can be with people, this can be with projects. And I feel like a lot of you are ruminating on the past, and you're looking at things that didn't work out in your interest like foregone opportunities that for some reason are no longer available to you. So because these things are kind of out of the picture, you're thinking about what ifs and like, you know, what could have been. And that energy is, um, by focusing on that energy, it is depriving you of the energy, the time that you could be focusing on things that actually work out, okay? So... <clears throat> I do feel a lot of stability are coming through, and I do feel as well that um, focusing yourself in the right direction, moving yourself forward, you know, rather than looking back, look ahead, because the back, uh, the past really can't be gone back to, okay, you have some major hitters here, this is pretty much like, you know, the end of the line, and what's next kind of energy, so um, it's really in your best interest overall. To not be so fixated on the, these three things that didn't work out and then choose among these two options. Um, think of it as just, you know, the universe's way of narrowing down these choices for you because it seems like you're a little bit scared about making the commitment, okay? So all is well in the land of Capricorns. Um, I do feel as well for those of you who are dating overall, you have some air signs, for some reason, they're popping up everywhere, but we are also transitioning into the time of a Aquarius. So I feel that, you know, um, Aquarius are getting busy too. So that's why I would explain the air signs. So air signs are Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And I do feel that um, for those of you who are dating, there's definitely some very, very positive air signs coming through for you. And they have a really nice, vibrant, intellectual vibe about them. So this can be meeting them through a classroom setting. It can be in a work situation. They're very, very loyal, I feel. They're, they're showing up in really good positions where they can teach you a lot, okay? And this can be, I, I feel like they have expertise, even though they're not like, um, uh, you, they don't have the credentials to back it up, but I feel that they have like a lot of good insights and they can uh, help you when it comes to whatever it is that you need help with, or they can, you know, even work to improve your communication skills. They can work to, um, for example, if you're doing like mock interviews, if you're doing, you know, any type of a defense, they can be the one to grill you, 
you know, in like a moot court setting, for example, and th they will do a phenomenal job. So if you want a study group or study buddy or anything like that, um, get an air sign on your team. Also earth signs too. They are very diligent, but I feel like air signs, they bring with them a lot of insights that you hadn't thought about before. And I do feel in terms of companionship and things like that, there's a lot of um, excitement generated in this union. So it, it looks very favorable to me. Um, and this is very, very, this is not going to speak to all, but I, I feel like for a lot of you, there is something coming back from your past, okay? And it's being blocked out. You're being protected from it. And I feel like it's a confrontational energy. Not in a bad way, but I do feel some unresolved business could potentially deal with a love relationship. Um, yeah, something that was unresolved in your past, something that, you know, didn't have very much closure is being um, someone from your past, I feel, is like, or th this can be also your energy, but I feel like it might be somebody from your past because you rarely leave things unfinished. But somebody from your past, and it doesn't have to be necessarily an air sign, but I feel like a confrontational energy is coming back in from the past. And he or she is being blocked out, so you are protected, okay? Don't waste your time this month entertaining what could have been with people, with projects, with opportunities. Don't waste your time doing that because I feel that timing is a major, major constraint for you already. You're op not operating at your best. You have a lot of distractions, I feel. And you don't. La the last thing that you would need is this you know, situation that didn't pan out to come back around and to um, occupy your mind and your, your, um, your thoughts, okay? So it's just something to think about. Um, I can say as well for a lot of you, there was <clears throat> a partnership in the past. And I feel that, um, you know, you might like the other person and they might be, you know, all great and, and everything. You know, there's like in, inherently the relationship is stable, but I feel that you might be on different paths okay and when you're on different paths with someone you can pretty much tell when you interact with them the things that you value or the things that you that really really moves you um they don't really it, it doesn't move them the same way and i feel like for a lot of people you pretty much know if somebody's on your same wavelength okay you pretty much know if um, things are going to work so i feel like Whoever it is that you were, you are or were in a relationship with, if this um, suspicion is coming out where you feel like we actually don't have that much in common or we're, there's something off, there's something off about the relationship, it is really important to re-examine what exactly is off, okay? They can be amazing people and, you know, you work together and you are attracted to them, but on an innate level, if there's no chemistry... If there's no like um, common paths that you both can walk towards, if there's no like common philosophical, um, you know, like just ways of living, ways of understanding where you fit in the greater scheme of things, I feel that the relationships that you have might be going through this sort of existential crisis because there's nothing inherently wrong with the other person. The relationship might be very well, you know, it, it could be going smoothly, but you just realize that you're not walking on the same path. That, that's like the best way that I can put it, because I feel like on an intuitive level, we know who's right for us. So there might be some severance that needs to happen. There might be some sort of reshuffling your life that needs to happen, but I feel like time is a huge constraint so you want to be very, very productive and um, methodical. And I feel like you're just kind of slow to act. You're dragging your foot. Uh, I feel like for a lot of you, you're kind of dragging your foot, hoping that, you know, um, time will pass and then some choices will dwindle themselves out. So it's not like you're waiting on anything. You're just dragging your foot because you are avoiding making this really major, major, major decision. Because you know that your life will be forever changed as a result. And you don't want to own up to that fact, okay? But the spread is so overwhelmingly positive. I feel like nothing will go wrong, Capricorns. Um, just try your best to get, you know, to break out of this 
snooze zone because um, life is ticking and you don't really have that much time left. So you want to just really um, get going, okay? It, it worries me when you show up in the reverse position as a king. Kings are very strategic. They know what they need to do when it's in the reverse position. Opportunities are slipping you by when you're not acting. So just be very careful about that. Um, for those of you who are in stable relationships, um, I would say too that you know you need to revamp some um, the relationship. I feel that there is a little bit of a discontentment and boredom. There's some type of discontentment here as well as boredom. This is about, you know, admiring the, the greener grass on, in the other pastures. This is about, you know, having the wandering eyes and it could play out as you or your partner or wanting something more, wanting something that stirs you on a very deep soul, emotional level. So you're kind of looking out there and figuring out, you know, like, what is it that really moves me? I, I don't feel like I have anything in my life that really moves me. Well, you have the financial stability, so finances looks very stable. You have a lot of options on the dating front. So there's like, you know, plenty of people that want to be around you. You're quite successful. Things are all coming your way. So everything is like very easy breezy this month. But I feel like this innate sense of dissatisfaction when you're just like, is there more to life? So that's why I feel like this existential crisis. For those of you who are kind of like um, reaching the end of your 20s and you're kind of like thinking to yourself, you know, I, I, I'm associating this with like the 20s where you're kind of like 29 and you're turning 30 or you just turned 30 and you're just like comparing yourself with your peers and you're thinking to yourself like um, they've accomplished so much with their life. You know, what am I doing? I need to get started. And then you feel discouraged as a result of it. And then for those of you who are in your 50s with the, the midlife crisis, I feel like it's the same energy, but then it's more about repairing relationships. So for those of you in your 20s, you're kind of like, oh, I, I need to like, you know, be really, really highly productive with my time. And I really need to, you know, get the ball rolling on these projects so that I can establish myself financially. And then I can, you know, like... Um, have something to to I guess brag about not some not because you're a braggart but um I do feel you want something to show for it you want something of value because um you feel highly productive if you have something under your belt that is of great value and then we go on to the next group where you know you might be in your 50s and you're going through dilemmas where you feel like I should have you know repair those relationships, or I should have reached out to these people. So you're thinking about missed opportunities that you, um, through your 20s and 30s, because you were out pursuing wealth and prestige, okay? So I feel that for those of you who are in your late 20s, you have a lot to learn here. So this is a card about, you know, um, placing a lot of importance on relationships, and this is a card about achievement. So at the end of our lives, it's not the achievements. It's mainly the relationships. It's mainly being true to ourselves. It's mainly about, you know, how we, um, it's mainly about cultivating, I, I feel like, relationships, making the world a better place and having meaningful connections with other people. It's not about, you know, this high-powered job and achieving financial stability it's not going to make you happy. I mean, it, it can make you very secure and you can have a good life. But in terms of emotional fulfillment, you want to really cultivate these relationships, okay? So I feel like the ones in your 20s, you have a lot to learn from the ones in your 50s who are in the 50s. So this would be a very interesting day if these groups get together and have some type of a mental exchange. Because I feel like for a lot of you... Um, you might need a mentor. You might need to, like, you know, have a chat with someone who is, if you're in your 20s, have a chat with someone one in their 50s. They're going to put things into perspective for you.